order. This meeting is being held in accordance with the public laws of 1975, Chapter 231. An adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by notice sent to the Star Ledger, the local source, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the township website. I will now ask Union County Vice Commander David Penna from American Legion Post 228 to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask that you please remain standing for a moment of silence for all those who serve our country, both near and not so near. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Capitis. Here. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Present. Committee Woman Du Bois. Here. Committee Min Huber. Oh. Present. And Committee Min Weber is absent tonight. Here with allergies. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Welcome, everybody, and happy <laughs> Valentine's Day to you all. Um, we're going to start, as always, with proclamations and announcements. Um, Unfortunately, some sad news. The township extends condolences to the family and friends of Donald Auer, 90 years old, who passed away on February 1st. Don, a longtime resident, was a member of the Historical Society, Springfield Garden Club, Boy Scouts, American Legion, and a member and the officer of the First Presbyterian Church for over 50 years. We also extend our condolences to the family and friends of former Auxiliary Police Sergeant Bernie Coulter, who passed away in Florida on February 8th. 2023, Sergeant Coulter served the auxiliary with distinction from the 1970s through the 1990s before retiring to Florida. And also, finally, the Township Committee extended his condolences to our colleague Chris Weber and his wife Vangie and their family on the recent passing of Vangie's mother, Rosalind Lopez. Uh, our condolences all around to all of the families that I just mentioned. Uh, just a note, our all municipal offices are closed on Monday, February 20th, in observance of President's Day, and not the next meeting, but the meeting after, March 14th. Uh, there is an election for uh, a referendum, which we'll be hearing about in a couple of minutes, and because of that, does anybody, we're not voting, I'm just trying to take everyone's feelings on this, because I would like to see the possibility of us <coughs> Uh, moving up the start time from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. Does anyone here on the dais have any issues, comments, concerns with that? It's not softball season yet, so I'm good early. I might be a little late, but I'll be here. Okay. And, you know, obviously the reason for this and the rationale mm -hmm. is, you know, obviously the clerk's office needs to do uh, their due diligence for an election, and, of course, they'll, they, their day starts at 5 a.m., and our meeting would run into the close of the polls, so I'm sure that doesn't happen. We're just moving the meeting to an hour earlier. So we will make a resolution for our next meeting, and I appreciate your cooperation on that. Thank you. Uh, and finally, uh, the last part of our proclamation and announcements uh, portion of our meeting, we are honored and privileged to have Dr. Rachel Goldberg, who is the superintendent of schools for our township of Springfield. And uh, as I mentioned before, on March 14th, there is a election coming up, a special election regarding a bond referendum that the uh, school has. And uh, before, uh, as, as Dr. Goldberg makes her way to the podium, um, uh, our attorney, Mr. Dowd, would just like to make a, a brief announcement about the presentation. Uh, so the mayor had asked me to make a couple comments just to make it clear to the public you know, what, what this presentation is and isn't about in terms of the township committee itself. This presentation is not required to be given um, here at a township committee meeting. Um, the township committee is make, you know, giving this opportunity to the board um, in an effort to help them uh, disseminate information, uh, educate view, uh, voters or prospe prospective voters, um, and inform them so that they can make uh, you know, an informed decision uh, on March 14th. Um, and the, the decision to have the referendum in, in and of itself is, is rests with the Board of Education, not with the township committee. Um, so this presentation that you're about to hear shouldn't be construed as to, uh, in any way, shape, or form as either a show of support for or as an opposition against any of the questions that are going to be on the ballot on March 14th. Thank you, Mr. Dowd. And, and Dr. Goldberg, before I let you go, I just want to let you know that um, obviously we met uh, in the year 2020. You started in this district, and that was my first year as mayor, uh, and, and we had our proper introduction then, and we just appreciate 
uh, the partnership that you uh, that we enjoy with you as the leader of the school system in the township of Springfield. And thank you for very much for coming and making some time here to uh, you know, have another source of information for our residents. And uh, please take it away. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Capitis. I I only can extend uh, my gratitude as as well. Um, you know, starting in July of 2020 was a challenge, uh, but I have uh, a appreciated the open communication that we've had uh, between the township and the school school board as a whole, um, and and throughout the last couple of years, I've had the opportunity to talk with many of you and um, and have a, a really appreciated your voice and sharing. Um, concerns or, or info, information as it relates to to our partnership and continuing to make that strong. Um, as you noted, we have um, a, an election on March 14th. It is a ballot. I'd like to extend my gratitude to Ms. Donnelly uh, for helping us to make that happen, um, and Mr. Basicolo and all of the members of the township that have uh, responded so uh, supportively to uh, to this piece. So um, one of the, the reasons for me coming is to be able to share with the township members as a whole who may not uh, have, have full access to all of the work that we're doing in the Board of Education meetings or who may not participate in them about what this referendum is and why we're asking for it. Um, so first and foremost, um, why do we need a bond referendum? We're coming to, town, to Springfield for a bond referendum because it's really critical that we provide students with school buildings and learning environments that are safe, secure, and comfortable for learning. Um, we know that our students learn best, and we know that our staff is able to teach their best when they're in buildings that are, are meeting their needs. Um, when we look at this, we also look at things like our, the security of our buildings. We look at the age of our buildings. Um, it's really neat to be able to work every day at Jonathan Dayton High School, which has a beautiful plaque um, commemorating it as a part of the Works Public Administration. It was built in the 30s, and um, that infrastructure is now a critical piece because it's aged. Um, just around the corner from us is Caldwell, James Caldwell School, um, one of the oldest buildings um, in, in our schools. It's been around for well over 100 years. It's gone through um, many iterations from fires to uh, a storied history of educating Springfield students. But once again, that age um, is, is a challenge for us to manage because of the functional infrastructure. Um, and that means it's simple things like the heat, um, or so it would seem simple. Um, heat, air conditioning, air quality, security, uh, electricity bathrooms and plumbing, all of those are critical pieces of the work that we do to educate students every day. Um, what we found is in looking at the age of this infrastructure that the repair as we go approach is really not working. Um, because of the level of, of, of work that we need to do, um, working, we're honestly oftentimes working in response to issues. We're not we're not looking at the full nature of the building because the, the cost to do that is, is somewhat prohibitive. So it's really critical that we start looking at this in a much broader um, and long-term scenario. So investments that we make will be critical for the next 20 to 30 years. So what is on the ballot? On March 14th, there's going to be two questions on the ballot. Um, the overall, are the overall topics that, that uh, we're asking voters to look at are heating and ventilation, safety and security, air conditioning, and then the, the, the spaces themselves. Um, the first question is really, I'm gonna come back and say, I often describe this as a Lego approach with question one and question two. Question one is the first part. Um, and it's really critical. It's heating, it's ventilation, and it's security. Um, what does that mean? We have all five schools that would receive uh, security upgrades. That includes new cameras um, and exterior doors for um, a, what we would call external hardening. I've been honored to work with Chief Cook, um, as well as members of the State Department of Education, Office of School Preparedness, um, we've had experts come in and give us feedback. So we're really proud that especially over this last year, a lot of our families have seen increased security with our buildings. Uh, but we also know that in order to take that to where it needs to be now, we need to do some critical upgrades. 
Those critical upgrades require an, an investment. Um, at each of the five schools, there's projects that include the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning of spaces. Uh, the first question is, in and of itself, a tax-neutral question. What does that mean? That means that it will not impact our current uh, taxes as they stand. Why is that? Because this year we released the debt from the previous referendum, which was held 20 years ago, and built the new wing on Walton School. Uh, what, what it, it, this gives us a great opportunity to continue that investment without it impacting, uh, our, our negatively impacting our taxpayers at this point. Um, each school would also, in, within question one, we're also talking about doing um, large shared space uh, heating and air conditioning. What does this mean? This means in each of our schools, we have gymnasiums, many of which are used almost constantly by our community as a whole. They don't have air, um, I'll say one of them has air conditioning, that's Sandmeyer. Um, the others do not have air conditioning, um, and heating is, is a challenge, as many folks know, especially if you're a regular at FMG, you have noticed that the gyms may be cold. Um, that has to do with the age of the infrastructure and work that we need to fix. So what we're talking about in that first question is not only in our classrooms, each of our, each of our classrooms, um, with the exception, well, uh, with few exceptions, I'm gonna just be very few exceptions, have what we call a univent, which is the primary air source um, that, that provides the heating and the ventilation. Many of those, um, I had a presentation with pictures, all of which are also available online, so um, I'm, you can go to our website, the springfieldschools.com slash referendum, see pictures of what the inside of the schools look like. Um, we, we may notice, you may notice, uh, families may no notice when they go in um, that their, the Univents um, have a hood that looks like a Studebaker, <laughs> complete with the logo. Um, they, many of them are so out of date that the actual parts um, aren't available anymore. And so we've been doing a lot of retrofitting, but we need to make sure that all of our classrooms have a consistent and continuous heat source. So that's one of the, that's a really critical piece. In, in particular, each of the buildings also has some other significant infrastructure challenges that we need to address. So at Edward Walton Early Childhood Center, where we lost so many classrooms and had to, had to move after Hurricane Ida, um, has a, a critical issue with stormwater management that has to do with drainage. Um, that's going to take some significant investment in the um, in the shared outdoor space, uh, in the courtyard space. Our students uh, utilize that space. It's critical space for play space, um, for recreational space. But after it rains, we can't use it for multiple days because we need to redo the drainage. So that's a part of question one. Um, at James Caldwell, um, it also includes the basement and bathroom renovations. So families that have been at, at James Caldwell know that they, they desperately need attention. And so that's also a part of question one. Um, at Jonathan Dayton High School, it also includes bathroom renovations. So if you've attended a, a game, um, chances are good you've been in the bathrooms. Uh, we know that they need work. In some cases, it's, um, it's simple work. It's new toilets, new sinks. Um, in other cases, it's more significant plumbing work, uh, some of which we won't know until we really get into fixing some of the issues that are there. And then at FMG, it is, um, it is bathroom renovations. Once again, if you've played basketball there, you've seen the bathrooms. Um, it's air conditioning and heating in the large gathering spaces, so that's two gyms. And it's heating and ventilation for 31 classrooms. Um, it's also really critical to note that each of these schools needs electrical service upgrades in some way in order to support these new systems. And so question one would help set that stage. So when I call it the Legos, that first piece is, is critical. It's heating, it's large shared spaces, it's electrical services, it's plumbing. In the next question, that's question two. Um, and question two really builds off of question one. Um, question two will only be able to pass if question one is passed. So we're putting this to voters. Um, once again, our question one is our most critical work. 
We absolutely need this investment. Uh, question two is things we might be able to build in over time, but it's much more cost effective, both from a project management perspective and really from a long-term perspective for us to do this at the same time. What question two does is it adds on air conditioning in those classrooms. So question one is replacing the univents. It's making sure that the heat is consistent. And question two, make sure that we have the air conditioning added. So for families that may wonder what, what would happen, or I have families that are concerned about the use of window units, um, this would do away with window units. Um, it would uh, help us kind of come back, significantly increase our efficiency. Once, we get, once we're able to, to eliminate the window units, we're able to use our, our electricity and our, our services in a much more efficient way. Um, the other piece that it, this involves is a building management system. Because of the age of our buildings, our temperature control is done on multiple services. Because each system may be not running, it is, may not be able to run on the same building management platform. So this also would provide us the ability to manage temperatures from, uh, from wherever we are. Look at them, look at consistency energy usage, look at efficiency. Um, the cost for, less, for question two is less than $8 per month um, from, uh, for families that are in a, a home with the average assessment value here of $533,000 and a little bit of change. That means if your assessed value is less than that, then it would be a less than $8 a month. And if your assessment is a little bit over, it would be a little bit um, higher. What that would allow for us is a total investment. Um, so the first question is approximately $18.8 .8 million. And the second question is $13.9 million. Um, together, they represent critical shifts and investment in our infrastructure that will serve our students and our community for many years to come. Um, Another really critical piece here is why do this via a referendum? And that's because the state offers aid that is only available to us if we do this as a referendum. So right now, as I noted, between the two, we're looking at about $32.9 million in investments with question one and question two. Together, because of the way that we've framed the work and in our approvals and requests from the state, that means that we have $11.1 .1 million in state aid available to support this, which means that our taxpayers in Springfield ultimately see a smaller bill if we do it via the referendum than if we do it over time. Um, we know that right now uh, this is really the best time to do this, partially because we absolutely need to. Um, I laughingly, not laughingly, um, uh, respond to social media on a pretty uh, constant basis. Not directly, but uh, my board members, members of the community say, um, my son or my child just texted me, they're freezing in school, what's wrong? Truthfully, the answer is infrastructure. Um, what, what's the problem? The problem is infrastructure. What can we do? We need to invest in our infrastructure. Uh, this is the right time to do that. Once again, as I said, this is a state aid that's only available. This timing with, um, in, in conjunction with the debt coming to an end means that we have that first question as a tax neutral approach. It spreads the costs over time, um, similar to how a, a homeowner might take out a, a loan. And that funding is gonna allow us to do the right type of planning. So instead of doing piecemeal approach to infrastructure, We'll be able to look at the full building, we'll be able to look at the electrical systems, and we'll be able to make the right decisions based on the, the building's needs. Um, our timeline is approximately uh, the March 14th vote. Um, the, I believe voter registration is open until the 21st. I think voters can register until the 21st. I'm looking at Ms. Donnelly to make sure my, my well, dates I'm, are right. You know, I'm usually thinking November and You're, June, I mean, so I'm trying it, to think. It's a little, it, it's it's a a little, little off, uh, yeah. off for a special election, but um, uh, we encourage people that may not be registered to, to go get registered. They have until the 21st and then um, follow the regular process. Um, election, the polls will be open at the regular polling places. They we will open be, at eight. They open at eight, they'll go eight to eight. Yes. Um, we will be reaching out to the police to ensure that we have um, the appropriate security for the buildings during that, that vote. And um, what then happens is if the re referendum passes, then what we'll be doing is building the projects um, and going out to bid for each of the projects. 
Um, different parts of the schools have different parts of projects. So for instance, the security will be one type of project that'll have a different timeline than something like the HVAC. We'll also be looking at building needs. Um, and right now, uh, we know it's very clear that uh, FMG and, and FMG, Caldwell, and the high school are, are probably the three critical priorities right now, with FMG and Caldwell really right at the top. So those will most likely be given priority in terms of time frame. Any work that gets done will have to be done in conjunction with the school schedule. So we'll be working with um, any folks that, that, are, that would be awarded the bid in the state contracts to make sure that the work is being done so that it doesn't interfere with student instruction. And uh, that kind of uh, takes it to, to the, I guess that's the end of it. Um, you know, we're, we're really hopeful um, that we're able to reach out to the community to answer questions. That's why I'm coming to you, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have regarding this proposal and um, what our, our process and plans are. Uh, but we are deeply appreciative of the opportunity to speak here this evening. Oh, we're, we're happy to have you. Do we have any questions <coughs> for Dr. Goldberg? Are you, the school, is school closed the day of the that election? No, schools will be open the days of the election. People into the school, not knowing who they are, with the kids there? I thought security, you know, I'm against that. I, I th the, it, it happens on other election days. On other election uh, days, the schools are closed. It, it happens during the primary. primary. Yes. And, and of course, the police cannot be. No, that, that, that. They have to be like a thousand that, feet away. Right? That, that law was changed. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, that will, you know, I, I, you know, with the school, I'm just worried about the kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have kids in all the schools. I, and we're, we've actually worked very closely with the police department. Um, at, as Ms. Donnelly said, it has been open during primary elections. So we have identified ways to ensure uh, that, that the, the entrances and the exits are carefully monitored, that we have a police presence at the schools where we have the, um, where we have the elections occurring. And um, our team even shuts off corridors. We, we, we approach it very, very um, carefully and cautiously, we certainly share that concern. Yes, and this, since this is an abnormal date of an election, just because this is a referendum, uh, Chris and I on the uh, safety committee will also be in touch with Chief Cook, uh, just to make sure that the precautions are taken because this is a unique date that they're having. Yeah, no, I sure but, I, but I understand well, what you're saying. I think <laughs> maybe we should reach out to the parents and let the parents know that we will be protecting the kids because I, you know, some parents might not like it. I'll just leave it at that. And I appreciate the concern. Thank you, anyway. Dr. Goldberg, I can't imagine how many times you did this and how many more times you will do this presentation up until that date. Thank you very much for taking some time to speak with us. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm going to leave some um, some flyers here if That's anybody has any, um, any interest or has any other questions. It has uh, website information and email addresses um, so that anybody can reach out. Thank you so much. Thank, no, you. thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, moving on on our agenda, public comment. I will open up the meeting for public comment on agenda items only. Anyone wishing to speak uh, on agenda items, I invite you to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public po comment portion of the agenda and move on to our administrator's report. Good evening, Mr. Basicolo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple of things I'd like to touch on. We did get a settlement on the opioid claim that we did put in, we shared in that. I, what did we get, $5,700? $7,900 we're going to share in that settlement. Okay. We did send a letter to RVSA. I think I mentioned to you the last meeting we did get fined for exceeding of about $2,500 give or take. So we did write them a letter listing all the things that we did last year, which was a considerable uh, dollar amount we spent. So we'll see where that goes. We had a pre-construction meeting with Flora and Decor. I just wanted to touch on um, very, very well organized. They're going to have 25 to 40 employees when they open up. The three buildings that they're knocking down, the COVID center, the lease was up on 2-1. The um, 
Cafe 22 restaurant, the lease is up on 218, and the Macy's building, the lease is up on 331. So the idea is they're gonna demo the first two buildings on 38, and then about six, eight weeks after, they'll demo the Macy building. And they're looking at trying to open the floor and decor store before the end of the year. They've got all of their plans in place. They were very, very well organized. So it, it looks like it's very possible they could make that happen. Uh, we had a meeting with Honeywell last week on building management. We went over some things for them to take a look at, so we'll give you a further report as we get info back from them. Uh, church wall project, I was over there today. They are still working on the new street, but they've got all the curbing in and most of the piping on the ground in. They came in for their permit to knock down the church. That demo permit has been issued. Sarah Bailey will be issued by the end of this week, and they brought in their footing and foundation drawings and the permit requirements for that, so they'll be issued shortly. That building will be done within a two-year period, and my guess is they'll be way ahead of schedule because they, they really fly when they get going. A couple other things I wanted to touch on. We've got a company called Trimco that does our roofing. They're gonna come out and do a uh, infrared scan on the roof at Chisholm Firehouse and DPW. It is about 19,000 square feet we're gonna do. That will allow us to figure out what areas actually need repairs. Because we're getting leaks. DPW is pretty bad. Chisholm's got some skylights that leak. We've always had problems with those. And the firehouse has got, I think where the two roofs kind of come together, we're getting leaks in there. So we're gonna have that fixed. But the first phase is they will come out and they will do the infrared test. So that will be done shortly. Um, our boiler downstairs, we got a second boiler called a slave boiler. Now that got water in it during Ida. We dried it out, fired it up, and it worked for a while. We started having issues with it. The chief can attest to. We started getting carbon monoxide leaking from it. We had a, um, a HVAC company come in, try to repair it. Cannot be repaired. So we were fortunate that Jen Sherman was able to get it added to the FEMA list and FEMA will be reimbursing us for the boiler. So we're gonna get that done very shortly. Try to get that on the list to get it fixed, repaired, or replaced actually. Uh, we're in the final phase of the DPW building, the old Hershey building, uh, the exterior being finished. I don't know if anybody's gone by it, but what they did is they, they covered the front with wood actually, and it's gonna get stucco. So it'll get stucco, new sign will be on it, so that's the final phase of that building. So that'll be good for us for the foreseeable future. Really turned out very, very well. Uh, road paving, you know, we talked to DPW and engineering, Diane and I had a meeting. We were talking about capital and what we're gonna spend next year. And we were able to actually, in looking back at the roads, we did so many this past year or two that we were able to trim out about 170,000 out of the capital requirement for the road program for this coming year, which is certainly a help. On a weather-related issue, I mean, it's been a very mild winter, I think, as everyone knows. That has helped us tremendously because we've saved our snow fund that we put <coughs> on the side for. We haven't had to dip into that. We haven't been hit with a bunch of overtime, which has helped us. So we're already in the parks right now. We're starting to clean those, get that work done. We already started to begin maintenance on the ball fields, and the street sweeper has been out constantly. So we're trying to kind of get ahead a little bit rather than waiting. So that's kind of where we've been for the last couple of weeks. If there's any questions or comments, I would be happy to answer. What about our favorite person, Mr. Long? I mean, people have called me and said, who is this guy? What are we doing? I'm tired of saying, you know, we're waiting to wait. The wait period is over. The only thing I can tell you is I got a report from our redevelopment attorney actually right before I came here. Uh, they were on site and they worked on the steel structure they found another one, so that's not finished yet. So they're working on that. The concrete reports, they've gone back to the contractor and ordered the reports. We don't have them yet at this point, and we don't have a definite date. So I think what we have to do is, I think we need to get together and decide what the next step is that the committee would like us to pursue. And that's something I think that needs to be discussed, probably an exec where we're going with that. Yeah. Craig, can I ask you a question? You don't want me to ask you. Uh, 
Um, can we force them to hire an engineer that we respect and we will, um, is honest, <laughs> you know, whatever, I don't want to say honest, but is, you know, that we think is good, you know, or, you know, because I want to make sure this doesn't happen again. It's, it's very unlikely, I mean, using the, the phraseology that you use, which is forced, very unlikely. Or, um, some of the options and the, the remedies that we have will be discussed. <laughs> And which we'll be discussing in a closed session probably relatively soon. Okay, I, you know, I, and I don't know whether we could. Something like that could potentially be part of a, uh, of a negotiated settlement, but we're not even close to that, that point yet. So I, I would don't want to comment any further than that. Yeah, I, mean, people are, I mean, I'm frustrated. I mean, I could, everybody up here is frustrated. And it's just the people in town keep on going past them. Say, I mean, in my opinion, the wood framing they got up, take it down. It was, it's been soaked and weathered. That will be looked at by our construction official and the determination will be made when the time comes. All right. How much more time do we have to wait before we can it's suggest to them start moving? I won't say force. That's <laughs> be coming soon. That's coming very soon. Be coming soon. Okay. I mean, you know, I just want to make, you know, I know there's, Regulations here. Did, did, did. Oh, okay. No, I, I would have jumped in, but I'll, I'll, I'll let I you speak. Like you were gonna speak. I, wanted to I speak. always want to speak. Well, I wanted to give you the opportunity to if you had something to say. I, I, I think we're making a, a committee meeting, Huber, and I, I'm sure you've read the, uh, the, the agenda this evening, and I think we've kind of all discussed it, and I think we're making a change at our redevelopment council mm -hmm. uh, this evening, and we'll be appointing a new council, which will provide the township an opportunity to possibly go in a, a different direction, and uh, uh, and will avail us of a new attorney that might have a different uh, uh, opinion, and council to guide us in this process. And I think that 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 process starts tonight, and over the next couple weeks, as he. Uh, uh, transitions in and our outgoing redevelopment attorney transitions out, I think we'll have a better understanding of where we are at the end of the month and maybe the next meeting. Mason Ray, or is that? No, that's fine. You would agree? Absolutely. Yes. Well said. Anything else for Mr. Basicola? All right. Thank you. Moving on to minutes and reports. We have some approvals. Do I have a motion, please? I will make a motion to adopt the regular and executive meeting minutes of October 11th, the workshop meeting minutes of November 2nd, the regular meeting minutes of November 9th, the regular meeting minutes of November 22nd, and the regular and executive meeting minutes of December 13th, 2022, as emailed. Madam Clerk, you were certainly busy in the last two oh, weeks. I was busy at home <laughs> in the last two weeks. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, um, it is my understanding because we do not have the full committee that uh, we would like to table 202301. I believe it's 2023. I'll, I'll make a motion to table ordinance uh, for second reading. Uh, do I need a roll call on this? You need a second. I have a second? I'm sorry. You're tabling it, right? Tabling it, correct. So you're I'll a second. A motion to ta wait. I made a motion to oh, table. Sorry. We need a second. I need a second. Okay. Do we need a roll call? Or just all in favor? Roll call. Roll call, please. Okay. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. And Mayor Capitis. Yes. Okay. Ordinance 202302. This ordinance amends the shade tree provisions of the Township Code. Well, Mr. Mayor, Dr. <clears throat> Mountain Clark. Ordinance 2302 and uh, publication of local source February 16th, 23. Uh, second. Excellent. We discussed this last month. I think it's pretty much yeah. 100%. Roll call, please. Committee Maneuver. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Mayor Capiti. Yes. Okay. Ordinance 2023. Zero three. This ordinance amends the provisions of the township. Wait, hold on. Hold on. We need to go back. I apologize. Um, we need to go back uh, to 202302. 
we need a public hearing since this is the second reading. Um, so what I'd like to do, actually, can you kind of direct me? Do I just need to do open a public meeting and then? You can just start. Why don't you start over again with, with Ordinance 2023-02. As, as read by Madam Clerk, sure. Ordinance 2023 02, uh, and publication in the local court February 16th, 2023. Second. Okay, now I'd like to open this up to public hearing. Anyone from the public wish to speak on this topic, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record, and give comment. Seeing no comment, I'd like to close the public hearing portion of this ordinance and without further discussion, uh, have a roll call, please. Committee Ms. Schuber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Ordinance 202303. This ordinance amends provisions of the Township Code to create the position of confidential administrative assistant. I will make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2023-03 as read by Madam, as read by Madam Clerk, uh, with a publication on the local source on February 16th, 2023. I'll second. I now open this ordinance for public hearing. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on this ordinance, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Uh, Seeing none, I'd like to close the public hearing portion of this ordinance um, and uh, move for roll call vote, please. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Committee Mayor Huber? Yes. Mayor Kappen? Yes. Ordinance 2023-04, this ordinance amends and supplements the existing ordinances governing certain employment positions and establishes compensation ranges for the reference positions within the Township of Springfield. I will make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2023-04 as read by Madam Clerk with publication in the local source on February 16th, 2023. Um, at this time, I'd like to make, open this ordinance to public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this ordinance, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, I'd like to close the public hearing portion of this ordinance. Uh, does anyone have any discussion up here? I mean, I'd just like them to realize, and John, if I'm wrong, tell me. This is a range. It isn't, it could be, I'm just saying, from $10,000 to $15,000. And they're not getting the highest that's written down. I mean, yeah, it, it, go it, online and start talking about it. I just want to make sure it's a range. It provides the flexibility for the township to make a certain hire at certain times of the year without coming directly to us for an ordinance change, which takes I want people to understand that. Yes. Three to four weeks versus one week. Understood. Okay. That's it. Oh my God. Roll call. Please. Uh, Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Manuber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Okay, we have a first reading on Ordinance 2023-05. This ordinance amends provisions in Chapter 3 of the Township Code regarding fees for services provided by the Township's Police Department. I make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2023-05 as read by Madam Clerk. Publication in the local source February 16th, 2023, with final hearing on February 28th, 2023. I will second. Excellent. Um, Mr. Basicolo or Chief Cook, do you want to just uh, give some rationale for this ordinance, if you don't mind? No, please. I'm sorry. You have no right ahead, Chief. I figured you wanted to. Um, yes, it's just uh, kind of updating our our um, rates, which are, have been in place for quite a period of time, uh, a little bit outdated compared to other municipalities, and also due to the changes in, in state laws regarding um, handgun permits and carry permits, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just we're coming up to date and matching what the state uh, allows us to, to be able to charge. Makes sense. Any discussion up here? Okay, uh, this first roll call, please. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Committee Min Huber? Yes. Mayor Capitis? Yes. 
Ordinance 202306. This ordinance is appropriating the sum of $200,000 from the general capital fund balance of the township for the purpose of Jitney and an OEM trailer. Uh, am I making a motion on that? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance, and I apologize, I was asking a question. Uh, ordinance 2023-06, as read by Madam Clerk, uh, with a publication in the local source on February 23rd, 2023. And the final hearing on that will be March 14th now. Oh, final I'm hearing? I'm not sure whether. Gotcha. Whether. All right. Uh, Mr. Basicolo, can you speak on this for, uh, for the benefit of the public? I'm sorry, I was trying to... Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I had too many questions. 202306, the second ordinance for first reading. Oh, that's something that Diane actually our CFO should answer on that one, please, Di. Sure. Uh, this uh, ordinance is, we're not going to anticipate, we're not authorizing any additional funds for it. The fund balance is cash that's actually sitting in the ca capital grant fund for uh, the purchase of a new Jitney for the services that we provide over to the train station, and it can always be a backup for seniors, as well as an OEM trailer that the OEM department lost in Ida and they're requesting to replace. Um, both of these items are on our FEMA list to get refunded, so therefore, um, once that grant money is finally awarded back to us, that money will go back into the general capital fund to fund, to replace the money or good good portion of the money that we're spending on this any questions or discussion up here no. I, I have a question <laughs> uh, the, 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 with the jitney have we <laughs> looked at and 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 possibly explored the option to uh t to go uh ev and no we have not and because again we just don't have the infrastructure right now to do it it's a direct replacement basically i had i had adam and Mike Rowley looked at what we were proposing to make sure we had the proper size, that type of thing, but no, we did not explore EV at this point. Well, uh, you know, I, I think it comes to a point where we have to, unfortunately, if, if, if we don't have the infrastructure, and I know at one time I thought we did have a, I, I think before, John, you, you and even I came on board, had an opportunity and, and was awarded a grant at one point uh, uh, to possibly construct a, uh, said infrastructure so you know it, it, not angry more disappointed in the direction where we are going but maybe this gives us an opportunity uh, to explore uh, 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 chances for that EV infrastructure and look at ways to uh, uh, construct that because I, th I do think it's coming and I, I, I think we have to really get real with the fact uh, that this is going to be needed not only for a one vehicle, but our entire fleet, and and I'm looking at you, Chief Cook, police, Maplewood next door, right? They've they've purchased EV vehicles, so it's coming. So we have to get we, had we have to get on we the, had a hybrid the long before anybody knew what a hybrid was. So yeah, so so you know we have to take that next step, and 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 it might be. Money to spend, but I, I, I really, really do think we need to get serious going forward. Well, we can look into it. We certainly can see we can get a price on it, what the delivery is, et cetera, et cetera. So I can ask tomorrow if we can get a quote yeah. on it. Thank you. I, well, I know we've kicked around the idea in the past of a, possibly, but I don't know how we can further explore possibly expanding like Jitney service to more stops around town possibly. I know we said we'd probably need another vehicle for that, so I know that's costly, but that's something I think we should maybe explore. I know we have a lot of commuters in Springfield and I think that could be possibly something people want. I'm not a commuter in that regard, so I'm not sure, but I maybe something we could survey the town if we think we can do something like that in the near future. That might be something welcome by people. All, all good things to consider, but I don't want to take away from the fact that uh, you know, uh, Ms. Sherry and her people you know, were able to um, get this and, and, and apply for the FEMA along with Ms. Sherman yeah. to get these two replacements and, and to have most of that money returned to a general yeah. fund. I think that's that's awesome, and that's a great job, and you should be commended for your efforts. Definitely. Anyone else? No. 
Excellent. Can I have a roll call, please? It's Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. <coughs> Committeeman Huber. Yes. Committeewoman Du Bois. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go through these next resolutions on consent agenda. If you'd like a resolution pulled, please uh, make it known. 2023 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. I'm going to pull 66, 67, 68. Yeah, 68 is the final one. Do I have a motion? Motion to accept uh, resolution 20. 2365 to 2367 and 2367 68. I'll second. Okay. Roll call, please. Yes. Committeeman Schuber? Yes. Committeewoman Du Bois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Mayor Capitis? Yes. Okay. Resolution 202368. This resolution authorizes the Township of Springfield to enter into an interlocal shared services agreement with the Bergen County Technical Schools for Information Technology Services. Do I have a motion? Motion. A second. Excellent. I just need to have this poll because I need to abstain. But it's not 68, it's 66. I just want to make sure that in case. 66. I say 68. I'm I sorry. 68. You know, I just want to make sure. 66. Resolution. We don't get in trouble. 2366. Sorry. Thank you. I don't want Craig yelling at me anymore. <laughs> Roll call, please. Okay. Committee Mitch Huber. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. It was supposed to be my motion, but I. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I will say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Committee Woman Du Bois. Oh, you're, you're slow. Come on. Uh, Mayor Capitis abstains. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have. Several discussion and action items for right. consideration. I make a motion to appoint Percy Pingpaw to the Board of Health to fill the term of Thomas Venezia expiring December 31st, 2023. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Abstentions? Nope. Excellent. Welcome Thank aboard, you. Percy. Thank, Thank you for your service, Thomas. Hi, sir. Oh, is it me? Uh, <laughs> Sleeping. I am, I am, I am. I, I thought I'd give you a shot. Uh, uh, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve uh, the request from the First Presbyterian Church of Springfield to waive the fees and certificates of occupancy in the amount of $250 for each of their tenants, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, the Good Shepherd Church. Uh, both are located in the parish house at 37 Church Mall. Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Man Huber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Uh, we have a request from Shabbat Jewish Learning Center for the use of Chisholm Community Center Senior Citizen Meeting Room on Monday, March 6th from 3 to 11 p.m. for a Purim event. Hold harmless is provided. Certificate of insurance will be provided on approval. Do I have a motion? Thank you. Motion. Second. Okay. Sure. Uh, do, we, do we need a roll I call do, on this? I believe so. Yes, since roll call, okay. please. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Min Capitis. Yes. Uh, for discussion and approval, a request from the Springfield First Aid Squad for the use of the courtroom for a blood drive on Saturday, May 19th, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., with the use of four rectangular tables with chairs, hold harmless certificate of insurance, will be provided on approval. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Committee uh, Min Huber. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Hey, can I ask a question before we go any further? I, I know on permits with churches and that. Right. I don't understand we let them go. But if the if the church or is going to start making money off what they're doing, you know, if they're improving it or whatever, you are, I think we have to look at it in a different way and say, well, you're making money. So I think, you know, and it's a touchy situation, I know that. Right. But I mean, I, I think that we should start considering 
charging the churches. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm just saying because it's... I, I, and, and not to cut you off with commitment Huber, I do agree. In fact, we held one of these over because we wanted to make sure that that situation didn't happen. So, but as the clerk informed me between this meeting and last is that we have traditionally in the past uh, waived fees for those situations where it looked like the entity would be profiting from that. And that's something certainly we can consider we in discuss, the future. You know, yes. And I mean, we can certainly discuss that yeah. in the future. I mean, I, I, I just want to, I thought about that last meeting and, sure. and that because I just want to make sure. Because they're making money and we're not charging them anything. Right. On one hand. For future discussion. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Commissioner Huber. All right. Pay some bills. All right. I'll make a motion to uh, adopt payroll invoices for the period of January 25th through February 24th, 2023, in the amount of $9,653,718.94. Uh, My hand hurts. Too much. I second. I can't second. I can't second that. Too much. Second. Go ahead. Do we have a second? Yeah. Roll, Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Minnie Minuber. Yes. Minnie Woman Du Bois. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. We have three correspondence from Westfield Ordinance 2023-03, adopting Lord and Taylor Train Station Redevelopment Plan, from the New Jersey American Water Petition for approval to change levels of its purchase water adjustment clause and purchase wastewater treatment clause. There will be a public hearing on February 23rd at 4:30 and 5:30 p.m. Uh, and they could, you could visit their website for further information. And from Milburn, we got a notice of introduction of Ordinance 263323 uh, regarding development regulations and zoning. Uh, I ask that they be received and filed. Uh, moving on to our last uh, agenda piece, public comment on any governmental issue. Any member of the public wish to come forward uh, with any comment or any governmental issue, uh, please step forward with your name and address for the record. Seeing none, I would like to close the public comment portion of this meeting, and I will respectfully ask for an adjournment. Adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Aye, but we're, we're, we're adjourned. <laughs>